the beginning is a very delicate time. But who cares about that? Let's talk about Half-Life. Every couple of years, there's an FPS game that changes FPSs for years to come. There was Doom in 1993, Half-Life in 1998, and Half-Life 2. I'll make videos on all these games someday, but today it's just Half-Life 2. So development began after Half-Life 1 came out, and only took 6 years to make, with only a source code leak to set them back. Anyway, the game released in 2004, and it's pretty cool according to most people. The game starts with an intro that probably left everyone playing in 2004 looking like this suddenly appear on a train with the most depressed looking people I've ever seen on it. You get off the train and see this strange post-apocalyptic world with this guy blabbing at you. The world reminds me of 1984 if you've ever read that book. Anyway, this police guy pulls you aside into this room and takes off his mask and... It's me, Gordon. Barney from Black Mesa. So, Black Mesa is where you, Gordon Freeman, used to work before this big incident happened that brought aliens and stuff to New Mexico. It's now 17 years later, and it looks like the aliens took over. So you go on a little run and find Alex Vance, who's going to be important throughout the game. You also meet Dr. Kleiner, who tries to teleport you to Alex's dad's lab, but his pet crab thing screws things up, and you get stuck outside the lab. You run around for a bit, then Barney gives you the crowbar, which is the perfect weapon of mass destruction. Then you run away from the Combine, who you'll be fighting this whole game. You come across these trains and get the pistol. Yeah, we have to talk about the weapons. They're all pretty good, actually. The pistol and crowbar are made sort of obsolete when you get the submachine gun and gravity gun, but other than that, they're great. The designs, the sounds, everything, all pretty solid. So after that, you get the airboat, and the most tedious level of the game begins. It's not a slog, but it is too long for what you're doing. There's a lot of finding ramps and opening doors, which is fun for the first 10 minutes or so, but it gets old pretty fast. I do really like the part where you shoot down a gunship, but other than that, it's just fine enough. Anyway, you get to the Vance's lab and meet Eli Vance and Judith Mossman, who, oh boy, will become important later. If you look around for a bit, you can find a newspaper which reveals more of the story. So, after the end of the first game, the Combine were alerted by the alien invasion, came to Earth, and took over in just seven hours. The guy you see at the start of the game on the screens is Earth's administrator, and also was the administrator at Black Mesa, where he used to work. Some of the aliens you see through the game are from the first invasion, and have become friendly. Alex is also here, and she has this new weapon. Yeah, it can only be used to kill certain enemies, like head crabs, which we've seen a few of already. Its main purpose is for showing off the physics engine, which still holds up pretty well. You get to play around with it for a while before the Combine dropped a few bombs on the lab. You have to escape through these caves and come up in this town, and oh boy, this is one of the greatest levels in any video game I've ever played. Remember the head crabs from earlier? Yeah, they're back. The ambience is awesome hearing the ravens and the weird moans from the zombies. Yeah, I said zombies. They don't seem scary at first, but the atmosphere is immaculate. These legs just hanging there on a string, and the ravens jump scaring you every few moments. The only moments where you can calm down a little bit is when you see the sketchy pastor who doesn't stick around for long periods of time. After a while, you find new zombie types who have sound effects that probably left everyone in 2004 looking like this. You get the shotgun given to you by the pastor, and you escape into the mines after a very fun fight in a graveyard. You have another part with some trains where you see this tall guy walking away from you. This is the G-Man. He's a weird dude who is completely a mystery. Even his name hasn't been confirmed, with G-Man just being the model name in the code. It's never even been confirmed who he is. This isn't the first time or last time we'll see him. After this train part, you come across a group of rebels who tell you that Eli Vance has been captured by the Combine, who brought him to Nova Prospect, which was mentioned earlier in the game. The rebels give you a car and send you on your way to Nova Prospect. Again, the vehicle level is just not great. And again, it's fun for the first 10 minutes, but after that, it just goes on for too long. However, this level is better than the one with the boat because of the ant lines, which become pretty fun to fight. After some driving, you lose your car and fight some more ant lions before fighting the Mother Ant Lion, which the game treats like a big deal and turns out to be a bit of a pushover. Afterwards, you get the Pharopod or the Bug Bait. This thing turns the ant lions into your friends, who you get to send around to kill enemies. 
One of the friendly aliens, called Vortigons, teaches you how to use the bug bait, then sends you off to Nova Prospect to save Eli Vance. There's this insane part with some gunships and a rocket launcher, then you're into the prison. Earlier in the game, some rebels were talking about Nova Prospect and treating it like it was hell on Earth. I was expecting it to be filled with strange monsters and creatures, and it had another antline queen and some combine. I don't know what to think of this level. It's long, sort of repetitive, but you can control the antlines, which is pretty fun. It seems like it's supposed to be scary with these spooky creatures on the TV screen, but they don't show up anywhere else in the level. Later on, you meet up with Alex and talk to Eli. There's a few parts with these turrets that you set up to kill the Combine. Then there's the big twist. Remember Judith Mossman from Eli's lab? Yeah, she's evil. Alex tries to use a teleporter to send Eli to Dr. Kleiner's lab, but Judith sends herself and Eli to the Combine base. You use the turrets again and use the teleporter to get to Kleiner's lab. When you show up, Kleiner says it's been a whole week since he last heard from you. He tells us that the attack at Nova Prospect was seen as a big stand against the Combine, and the rebels are fighting back. There's another couple of fun levels where you command big groups of rebels against the Combine. After some of that, you enter the Combine Citadel, which is the base of the Combine, and the administrator, Wallace Breen. You climb into this weird cell thing and go on a ride through the Citadel. It's somewhat similar to the intro of the first game, which I promise I'll make a video on. After that, you lose all your weapons except the gravity gun, which gets supercharged, which you can tell because it turns blue. This is another great level, where you fight against the Combine with a ridiculously overpowered weapon. After some of this, you get back into your cell thing and hey, it's those weird monsters from Nova Prospect, I wonder if you get to fight them this time- You don't. You just don't. They sound funny when they scream though. After this, a camera sees you and you get sent to Breen's office. He talks to Alex and Eli, who are both also here. Judith is also here, and she betrays Breen, so the good guys can escape. Breen runs away with the gravity gun and talks to this big worm man before dropping the gravity gun and stepping into a big orb thing. He fights some more combine as Breen's bubble goes up to the top of the citadel. When he gets there, you shoot him with some energy balls and then Alex comes up and starts celebrating and then... <laughs> yeah! Did it! Come on, Gordon. We've got to get out of here. Maybe we still have... Time, Dr. Freeman? Is it really that time again? It seems as if you only just arrived. You've done a great deal in a small time span. You've done so well, in fact, that I've received some interesting offers for your services. Ordinarily, I wouldn't contemplate them, but these are extraordinary times. Hmm? Rather than offer you the illusion of free choice, I will take the liberty of choosing for you. If and when your time comes round again. I do apologize for what must seem to you an arbitrary imposition, Dr. Freeman. I trust it will all make sense to you in the course of... Well, I'm really not at liberty to say. In the meantime, this is where I get off. That's Half-Life 2. The game is really good for the most part. The graphics mostly hold up, with some textures looking a bit aged. There isn't much music, with the machinery making up most of the background sounds, other than a few parts. The music in these parts is pretty good, but nothing super memorable. The voice acting is mostly good as well. The game was a big success, with two expansions, Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and Half-Life 2 Episode 2, which ended on a huge cliffhanger and still hasn't been expanded on since 2007. A VR prequel came out in 2020, but the franchise has probably run its course by now. Alright, thanks for watching that video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. And if you hated it, please randomly rearrange the keys on your keyboard before leaving a hate comment. Goodbye.